Now that all the data is well styled, I can compose the map deliverable for this sample project. QGIS has a print composer for designing maps. Before I open the print composer, I'm going to get the final extent set correctly. I'll zoom in a little bit tighter to the sagegrass habitat data. So I'll use the zoom in tool and I'll drag a box with my left mouse button just a little bit tighter to the habitat than I currently was, leaving a little bit of the Pacific Ocean for context off to the west. Now I'll click on Project, New Print Composer, and I'll give the composer a name. I'll just call it Lab 4 and click OK. The Print Composer is an application window with many tools that allow you to craft a map. The main window shows the piece of paper upon which the map will be designed, and there are buttons along the left-hand side for adding different map elements, such as the map body, the scale bar, photos, text, shapes, and attribute tables, etc. Across the top are buttons for exporting the composition, navigating within the composition, and some other graphic tools such as grouping and ungrouping graphic elements. There's also a commands history panel, which I'll close for now. I'll make this a little bit bigger so I can see my map better as I'm working with it. I can use the zoom in to zoom in to my sheet of paper. On the right, this composition tab is where I can specify details about the overall composition. So here I'll set the presets to ANSI A, which is a letter, size sheet of paper. I want the orientation to be landscape, so I'll keep that setting. And then I want to set the export resolution to 300 dpi, which it is by default. That's a good resolution for printing. And these were all listed as map requirements at the beginning of the lab. This button here on the left is the Add New Map button. I'll click it and I'll drag a box on my sheet of paper where I want the map to go. I'll need a little room at the top of the page for a title and a little room to the right for a legend. The map object can be resized after it's added by selecting it and using the handles around the perimeter to resize. So I can drag it, maybe shift it a little bit to the left so that I have a little more room for a legend over there. Each item added to the map canvas becomes a graphic object that can be further manipulated if it's selected by the item properties tab over here on the right. Generally the map will look as it does within QGIS desktop. However, I may need to go to QGIS Desktop, change the extent, come back to the Print Composer, and click the Update Preview to change the position of the map. There are also some other tools. There's this Move Item Content, which allows me to pan the map within this map window. Other features of the map body can be adjusted from options found on the Items Properties tab. This Items Properties will change depending on which graphic element is selected. It'll be different for a legend versus a map body, etc. So here with the map body, I have the update preview button. I can set this to the map canvas extent, which may shift things a little bit. So there are some tools over here to tweak the extent of the map, and you may have to go back and forth a little bit till you get it just the way you want it. It's normal to have some back and forth with QGIS Desktop and the Print Composer before getting the map extent just right. So now I'll add the title by using the Add New Label tool which is again over here on the left. All the Add Map Element buttons are found there. So I'll drag a box across the top where I want that to go. And on the Items Property tab, I can type in my title. Once I've got my title set, I can click the Font button to adjust the font. I'm going to use Times New Roman with a size of 36 and I'll make it bold. Click OK. There are also tools for aligning it. I'm going to give it a horizontal alignment of center. Now I'll add a legend. I'll use the Add Legend tool and click where I want that to go. There's some editing that needs to be done to this legend. The uppermost Western States layer doesn't need to appear in the legend. It's there just for cartographic reasons. Nor does Mexico since it doesn't appear on the map. Furthermore, the land ownership classes should be spelled out for the map reader. So I'll select the legend, and on the Items tab, uncheck Auto Update. This will enable us to modify the legend. However, updates to the map will no longer be reflected in the legend unless we re-enable Auto Update. To delete any unnecessary layers, I can just select them and click the Delete button. So for example, this upper Western States layer doesn't need to be there, and I can just select it and click this Delete button to remove it from the legend. 
it's still on the map. I'm just removing items from the legend here. I'll also select Mexico and delete that. Now I'm going to work with the federal land ownership in the legend. I'm going to select BLM and I'll click this edit button and this allows me to change BLM to the Bureau of Land Management. It can be good to fully spell out acronyms so that the map reader doesn't have any confusion about what those are. You'll do this for the other land ownership classes as well. So here I've taken care of those other land ownership classes. I'll reposition the legend. The final map will look something like this. I added the data sources. This is another label found here. So it's added the same way as the title, just with a smaller font. This neat line was also added. That was added by using the Add Rectangle tool, going into the style of that, and then just making it a fill of no brush. So it becomes a hollow rectangle. Now that my composition is complete, I'll export it with the Export as Image button found right here. I'll save this to the lab folder. I can choose the type of export image I want. In this case I'll make it a JPEG. I'll just call it lab 4. It'll export it at 300 dots per inch as we specified and it'll be a page size map as a JPEG that you could then insert into a report or give to a client, etc. So in this lab, you've created a well-designed map using some of the cartography tools available in QGIS Desktop. You created a map highlighting federal land ownership within sage-grouse habitat for a client. This involved styling the layers, styling the layers by categorical attributes, dealing with the spatial reference of the map, and crafting a map composition.